Greetings and welcome everybody to the first video of 2020. So it is 4th of January and I'd like to take a moment to wish you all a very happy new year. So coming back to the topic, Samsung is rolling out the Android 10 update for the Galaxy Note 9. You guys can see I have a notification here and by the way this is not the beta update, this is the official Android 10 update for the Galaxy Note 9. And this update brings a lot of new features to the Galaxy Note 9, especially features from the Note 10. So Samsung will add DeX over USB. So this was a feature which was exclusive on the Galaxy Note 10. Glad to see Samsung is now adding these features to their older flagships. And obviously it brings one UI too and a lot of new updates especially the camera will have a new UI. So in this video what I'm gonna do is update the Galaxy Note 9 to Android 10 and then I'm gonna show you all the new features and changes that are included with this update. Also, the time code is in the video description if you want to skip to any part in this video. But I do recommend that you watch the entire video, otherwise you might miss out on something. Also, this update is not yet out in all the countries. So if you don't see this automatic update notification, don't worry, this update will hit your Galaxy Note 9 sooner or later. But here's what I want you guys to do. So go to settings, scroll all the way down, then tap on software update and then tap on download and install. If you do this, the phone will forcefully check if there's an update available. And if it is available, you should see this screen. Anyway, let's go ahead and download. Also, a lot of people ask me which Galaxy Note do I have? Well, this is the unlocked Exynos Galaxy Note. So we don't get Snapdragon over here. So all the Samsung phones that I've got are running the Exynos CPU. Downloading has finished. So let's go ahead and install the update now. And no, this will not wipe off your personal content. So all your contacts, messages, apps, pictures, music, everything will be there. So I'm just gonna put the case back on because look at this. My phone has a freaking dent on its body. So I've got this case, purchase link in the video description. No, this is not sponsored by the makers of this case. So this is just a cheap case I bought off AliExpress. Oh yeah, much better. Okay, so I'm just gonna let the phone sit and install the update and we'll be right back. All right, so here we are. We are now at the lock screen and the phone is running Android 10. Actually, it is still doing something, finishing system update. And initially, your phone will get hot and it will run slow. That is completely normal. So here's what I want you guys to do. Just plug your phone in into the charger and leave it sitting at the table for about 30 to 40 minutes so that the phone finishes whatever it's doing in the background and let everything settle down and then start using your phone. So it's still installing the uh, system update, but I'm gonna go to settings, scroll all the way down, and we will tap on about phone, then tap on software information, and you guys can see one UI version two, and we are running Android 10. And if you repeatedly tap Android version, you will see this, and this is the Easter egg, you can move these around. Hey guys, future Charlie here. So just wanna clarify a few things. It has been almost 24 hours since I've been using the Note 9 on Android 10 and so far my experience has been very good. The phone is butter smooth so the performance is fantastic, haven't experienced any lags or slowdowns. No matter how many apps you launch this phone will work just fine. So a lot of people do think that if you update the operating system the phone will slow down but yeah so far so good nothing has slowed down the phone does work fine multitasking is great and also surprisingly the battery life is also quite good so we are at 65 percent we will go to device care battery battery usage so for today that is 5th of january i have two hours and 10 minutes of screen on time and we still have 65 percent battery remaining and you can see all the apps that i've been using today and the best part is after the Android 10 and One UI 2 update, the Galaxy Note 9 feels almost exactly like the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Obviously, you don't get the ultra wide angle camera and some camera features are missing like the slow motion video for the front camera. But the thing is the performance and the software functionality is almost identical between these two phones. And yes, you do get Samsung DeX over USB and link to Windows, which I will show you later in this video. So yes, functionality wise, the Note 9 is almost at the level of the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, which is awesome. Now, one issue you guys may encounter is the Prime Video app will stop streaming in HD after the update. All you have to do is open up Play Store and go to My Apps and Games and update Prime Video app from over here. 
and once you update the Prime Video, Apple starts streaming back in HD. So yeah, kudos to Samsung for adding the Note 10 features onto the Galaxy Note 9. Yeah, the phone does feel nice and awesome. Okay, so now let's take a look at all the new features that this update brings to the Galaxy Note 9. We will first start off with the camera because the camera UI has seen a slight redesign compared to the old one. And for a comparison, I've got my Galaxy S9 Plus here. So this one is still running the older version. So let's fire up the camera over here. So the first difference you will notice is that these camera modes have been moved away from the bottom of the screen. So now we have three camera modes here live focus photo video and then we have a more button so instead of all these camera modes being laid out at the bottom samsung has added a more tab here so this one contains all your camera modes and to be honest i kind of like this approach more than the old one because this will reduce the number of steps that are required to go back to the previous camera mode for example if i'm taking a picture in night mode i'll just take a picture and then if I want to go back to the photo mode, I just have to tap this and it will go back to the photo mode. This one, on the other hand, will require several steps. So for example, I'm taking a picture in night mode, taking a picture. Now I want to go back to the photo mode. So it does require multiple swipes to go back to photo. This one, single tap, it goes back to photo. Also, now when you zoom in, this is kind of more smooth. So see that? Nice, I like this. This one, it just zooms in right away. I do like this smoother zoom on the One UI 2. So let's go back to the More tab. And of course, if you do like the older version, you can just drag and drop these at the bottom over here. And then if I want this at the left, I can place this wherever I want. And if you wanna remove, you can do this to remove a camera mode then press on save and it will save your new configuration so this is the setup that i like i like to have the pro mode at the far left the night mode photo video and then you have the more tab where you have access to the other camera modes the next change in the camera that i like to show you is in the pro mode so we will go to pro mode on both of these phones so first off you can see these icons are a little bit bigger so on the older version, these were very small, difficult to work with. Now you have bigger icons and when you tap on them, this menu will stay on the screen instead of disappearing after about two seconds. So this is kind of annoying. You open up this menu and it disappears after two seconds. This one will stay on the screen until you manually dismiss it. So that's also kind of nice. And yes, you still have the filters these are still downloadable. You can download them from the Galaxy Store by pressing this button. You will go back. And then you also have Beauty Effect. And turn it on and off by pressing that button. Then you also have Motion Photo. The icon is over here. And lastly, when you zoom in or out, the phone gives you three options. 1x, 2x and 10x. So previously we did not have this. So this is also new. So previously you had to like fine tune everything and adjust yourself. Now you have these buttons over here which will let you zoom in or out just by one single tap. So all of the old functionality is still there. The camera UI is slightly different and I do prefer this newer one because of this more button. It consolidates all your camera modes into one single place. Enjoying the content? Well, make sure to subscribe and do press that bell icon so that you can get notifications to my latest uploads. Let's continue. One UI 2 also brings a screen recorder to the Galaxy Note 9, so you don't have to download any more third-party screen recording apps. You have a screen recorder built in into your phone. So now let's drop down the notification panel. You can see there is a built-in screen recorder. So first off, we will check the settings. So we have the sound settings, video quality, and then your selfie size so i'll just leave it at default we will start recording Let's see start recording three two one okay so now the phone is recording whatever is going on on the screen and you can check out all your apps while the screen recording is going on so let's stop you can also include your selfie by pressing that button so hi there stop you can also write on the screen and once you're done press the stop button and that will save the recording in the gallery 
So here is the recording, let's play it quickly. Whatever is going on on the screen, and you can check out all your apps while the screen recording is going on. So, so this is kind of awesome. You can also include your selfie. I press the chat button. So you can see everything is going on nice and smooth. So here's the thing. Now I can easily go ahead and remove this DU recorder because I don't need it. So one less third party app on my Galaxy Note 9. Finally Samsung has added a built in screen recorder. Thumbs up. The way you pick wallpapers is also different on One UI 2 and yes Samsung has added dynamic lock screen which I will show you in just a moment. So if you pinch out, tap on wallpapers, it takes you to this screen. This one shows you a preview of your lock screen and your home screen on a single page. On the older version, if you tap on wallpapers, it takes you to the Galaxy Store. This one will show you a preview and you have three buttons over here. My wallpapers, this one takes you to the pre-installed wallpapers. And if you press on the downloaded button, these are all your wallpapers that you have downloaded from the Galaxy Store. Now speaking of Galaxy Store, you can still access the Galaxy Store by pressing this button, explore more wallpapers. So this will again take you to the Galaxy Store. The second option here takes you to your gallery. You can just pick a wallpaper and then let's go back again. Now, if you tap on wallpaper services, this is new. So we have a new feature called dynamic lock screen. So press on the gear icon and select category. So these are a set of predefined wallpapers. So if this one contains landscape wallpapers, we will download this. So what is dynamic lock screen? You can set a particular category as your dynamic lock screen and whenever you unlock your phone or wake the phone up, there will be a brand new wallpaper and you can swipe to see new wallpapers. And by the way, you will get updated wallpapers every two weeks. So Samsung will update these every two weeks. I have selected landscape. So let's go ahead and check this out. Put the phone to sleep, wake it up. We have a wallpaper, put it back to sleep. And if I wake it up again, there is a new wallpaper waiting for me. See that? And you can swipe like this and you can swipe like this to see more wallpapers. So that is really, really cool. And these are proper high resolution wallpapers. They look stunning on the screen. I do prefer the pets category. This one is really, really nice. And really the best part is that Samsung will update these every two weeks so you don't have to manually do anything see that brand new wallpaper whenever you wake your phone up and this does not change the home screen wallpaper so the home screen wallpaper still remains the same that just changes the lock screen wallpaper also by the way one feature that has been removed is the motion effect for the wallpapers i don't think big youtubers will tell you this but this motion effect which kind of gave you this 3d ish effect on the wallpapers is now gone so i will set this as wallpaper for home screen and lock screen so this motion effect option has been replaced by sync my edits this kind of syncs the crop across the lock screen and the home screen so previously we had this motion effect thingy now it's gone it has been replaced by sync my edits so if you can find this motion effect let me know in the comments down below but i think this feature is now gone so that uh, 3d motion effect thingy is gone unfortunately yeah that kind of sucks because i did used to like this motion effect it kind of gave the phone's display a sort of a 3d feel I don't know if you guys have noticed but whenever you wake your phone up you have this new animation for the always on display. So watch what happens to the clock when I wake my phone up. See it kind of slides up. Now when I put my phone back to sleep it will slide back down. So this is a new animation with One UI 2. So on the previous version if I wake the phone up the screen just turns on, the clock does not slide up my phone back to sleep the screen goes off and then the clock comes back on this one you have this new animation kind of looks nice speaking of new animations we do have smoother animations on android 10 and that kind of makes the phone feel a little bit more mature so for a demonstration i have instagram open by the way if you're not following me on instagram please do follow because i do post a lot of content here by the way i'm using gestures so no navigation bar at the bottom of the phone so if you want to go to recents, 
swipe up like this and this will open up recents. On the older version, we had a slightly more robotic animation. See how it differs? Once again, recents, you have a robotic animation. This one, recents, you have a slightly new animation. And you can just do this and the windows bounce. This one does not have that effect. So slightly less animation and more robotic on the previous version. This one feels a lot more smoother and fluid. Android 10 also brings brand new full screen navigation gestures to the Galaxy Note 9. So right now I'm using the old navigation gestures. So that means this is home, this is recents and this is back. Now let me show you the new navigation gestures because I think you guys will absolutely love the new navigation gestures. So we will go to settings, then tap on display, scroll down until you see navigation bar, tap over here, then over here make sure you have set this to full screen gestures and then tap on more options. Now over here select the second option which says swipe from sides and bottom. So this is the new navigation gestures. Also you might want to adjust the sensitivity, I am going to leave it at default because it works just fine for me. So now let me show you how these new navigation gestures work. To go back, you can swipe in from either side of your screen. So doing this will take you back and by doing this on the left side of the screen will also take you back. And if you want to go home, swipe up, release and this takes you back home. If you want to open up your recent apps list, swipe up, hold and this will open up your recents. So once again, let me Okay, so now let me go to settings. So I want to go back. I'll do this. That takes me back. Alternatively, I can also use my left thumb like this to go back to the previous screen. So you see the advantage of these new navigation gestures. You don't have to use your phone with your right hand. You can just use your phone with your left hand because the back button instead of being over here is now at the either side of the screen. So I can also use my left hand to use my phone. So this makes using the phone a lot more easier and convenient compared to the older navigation gestures. So one last time, let me demonstrate. Here's the picture. I want to go back. You can swipe in from either sides of the screen to go back, to go back home, swipe up and release, takes you back home to see your recent apps list, swipe up and hold and this will open up your recent apps. Also, you can now shuffle through your apps by doing this and you can shuffle either ways. If you wanna go back to the previous app, you can just do this to go back and forth between the apps that are already open. So I personally love these new navigation gestures. I think this is a step in the right direction. So one interesting thing I wanna show you is that some apps have a menu over here that opens up when you swipe in from the left. By the way, this is the Play Store. So swipe in from the left and that opens up this menu. Over here, when you have the new navigation gestures turned on, if you swipe in from the left, that is actually the back key. So what do you do if you have to open up this menu? Well, you just swipe in at an angle and that opens up the menu. Swipe in straight and that takes you back. Swipe in at an angle and that will open up this menu. Once again, swipe like that to open up the menu, to go back, do this. So that's how the new navigation gestures work. Android 10 replaces night mode with dark mode. So if I drop down the notifications panel, you can see instead of night mode, we have dark mode. Now dark mode performs the exact same functionality as night mode. It will change the theme of the phone from white to black, but it does have a new feature under the hood. So we will go to setting and then we will go to display, then tap on dark mode. So a new feature over here is called apply to wallpaper. So dark mode does darken the wallpaper a little bit when you turn this feature on. It's very difficult to see on camera, but yes, it does work. The wallpaper does become a little bit dark. The effect is very little, but yes, it does work. You can already tell the wallpaper does become dark. Then adaptive color filter is automatic blue light. Turn on blue light filter automatically between sunset and sunrise to reduce eye strain. But it does require access to location because the phone needs to know your location so that it can synchronize the blue light filter with the sunset and sunrise. By the way, widgets are also now compatible with dark mode. So if you long press on a widget, go to widget setting, you have a new feature called match with dark mode. 
So watch what happens when I turn dark mode off. So once dark mode is turned off, that widget kind of becomes a little bit white. Once I turn on dark mode, it goes dark. So that is also something that is new. Also, the notifications on the lock screen also get affected by dark mode. So we have a dark background over here. Once I disable dark mode, it will become white. Once again, enable dark mode and it becomes slightly dark. So that is kind of really nice. On Android 10, you can actually force dark mode to run with third party application. For example, you can actually turn on dark mode for the Amazon shopping app and it will look somewhat like this. So instead of the background being white, it will be nice and black like this. But this feature is kind of hidden from the user, so you will need to turn on developer options to enable that. So now let me show you how you can turn on dark mode for third party applications. So first off, drop down your notification panel and we will go to settings. Then scroll all the way down and tap on about phone. Then tap on software information and then repeatedly tap the build number and enter your pin. But if you don't have a pin code unlock, you will see this message. Developer mode has been enabled. Now we will go back. And then if you scroll down, you will see a secret menu called developer options. Open this up. Inside developer options, scroll down until you see hardware accelerated rendering and over here turn on force dark mode. And once you turn this on, dark mode will run with third party applications and make sure you keep developer options turned on otherwise that setting gets reset back to normal. So now when I launch the Amazon shopping app, this will work with dark mode. So you can see the background is black. By the way, dark mode is not supported on many apps, so some apps might malfunction. For example, Facebook Messenger does get messed up and so does Snapchat, but it's kind of nice to see this dark mode is making way to third party apps. And I would personally like to see more apps with dark mode compatibility because it just puts less strain on your eyes. On Android 10, Samsung has also updated the screenshot and the smart select tool. So now whenever you take a screenshot of a photo, for example, we have a photo over here. Let us open up the smart select. Let us open smart select and select the rectangle option. So now the rectangle option will automatically highlight the photo for you. So let's go back and let me reposition that the photo is over here. I'll open up the edge panel, select the rectangle option. See how the phone automatically highlights the photo for you. Now on the older version, if you were to take a screenshot using smart select, it would just place a rectangle in the middle of the screen. So it does not know that there is a photo in the background, just places the rectangle over there. This one knows there's a photo over there and it will automatically highlight the photo for you. And this works everywhere. So I have the Chrome web browser open. So I want to take a screenshot of this photo. So I will open up smart select, select the rectangle option and the rectangle option automatically highlights the photo for me. And when I press done, a screenshot of this particular photo will be taken and you can extract text if you want from over there. And if you want to save, just press this button and the image will be saved in the gallery. So only that image will be saved. So on the older version, if you try and take a screenshot, again, it will just place a rectangle in the middle of the screen. So it really does not know that there's a photo over there. And you kind of get a similar functionality when you take a screenshot. For example, again, I will launch Instagram, take a screenshot over here. Screenshot has been taken and I will select the cropping tool and you will see a little blue rectangle over here. And if I tap on this, it will automatically highlight the photo. And then I can just press save and the photo will be saved in the gallery. So here it is. So yes, screenshot tool and the smart select both have become a little bit better than they were before. Have you ever ended up deleting a contact of your phone accidentally? Well, fear not because on Android 10, whenever you delete a contact, it will go into the recycle bin instead of getting deleted permanently. So we will go to contacts and let me select three contacts that I want to delete. So now when I press the delete button, it says here move three contacts to recycle bin and then move to recycle bin. So those three contacts have not been deleted. They are now in the recycle bin and you can access the recycle bin from over here. So we have the three contacts and from here you can choose to empty the recycle bin, delete them permanently 
or to restore the contacts back into your contact book. And if you choose to do nothing, these contacts will be deleted after 15 days. So I'm just going to select these and restore them because I don't want to delete these contacts. But yeah, it's kind of nice to see this feature because sometimes you do end up deleting some contacts accidentally and now they will go into the recycle bin instead of getting deleted permanently. Also, another new feature I have noticed in the contacts application is the ability to add contacts through a QR code. So you see this QR code icon over here. Just tap on this and this will open up a dedicated QR code reader. And many business cards do have a QR code printed on them so you can scan them using your camera and the contact will be automatically added to the contact book. So just for a demonstration, I have a test contact here. I can just press the QR code button here to share the contact and just point the phone like this. And that is it. Now when you press save, this contact will be saved in the phone book. And you can see on the previous version, there is no QR code symbol over here. So that's a nice little addition to the phone book. One UI 2 also brings some new edge lighting effects to the Note 9. Now edge lighting comes on whenever you get a notification on your phone. For example, you can see the edge lighting has come on because I've sent myself a text message. So now if you get some new edge lighting effects, let me show you. We will go to settings, then we will go to display, scroll down to the part which says edge screen then edge lighting, then select lighting style. So this is the glitter effect that everybody loves. But if you scroll over here, we have some new effects. So this is the heart effect. You can see these hearts popping out. Let me change the color to yellow because it will be more visible. So you can see the hearts popping out from over there. Advanced lets you change transparency, width and duration. Change the color here. And then this is the fireworks effect. I really like the fireworks effect, quite eye catchy. Then this is the eclipse, echo, sides of the screen lights up, then spotlight. So these are the new edge lighting effects available with Android 10. On Android 10, whenever someone sends you a link over text messages or a messaging application, you now have the ability to open up that link directly from the notifications panel. So you can see the phone is suggesting to open up this YouTube link to the YouTube app. And you can just press over here and the link will open. So you don't have to actually so you don't have to actually open up the message and then open up the link. You can directly open up that link from the notifications panel. And you can see this is a website link. So the phone is suggesting to open this up with the Chrome web browser. So you can see how this works. The link directly opens up from the notifications panel. Don't need to open up the messages. So check this out. I have sent myself a text message. Where are you? And if I pull down the notifications panel, the phone is suggesting two replies at home and I am here. So you can just tap on this and the phone will reply for you. So you don't need to open up the message and write a message. So simple questions, you will get suggestions at the notifications panel and you can then quickly reply to a message. The device care menu has also seen a complete redesign on Android 10. So device care menu is where you check your battery storage, memory and security of your phone. So this is how the old one used to look like. Now let's open up device care over here. So settings, scroll down and tap on device care. So this is how it looks. The functionality is still the same. So you still have battery storage, memory and security, just like you did before. But the UI is slightly different and the menus have been moved. So I will now tap on battery. And this is where you can check your battery usage, change the power mode. You still have all the power modes available here. Let's go back then app power management you can put apps to sleep so all the functionality is still there it's just in a different menu so this is how it used to look like before this is how it looks like now you have the option of enabling and disabling fast cable charging and fast wireless charging right over here and if you tap on battery usage it will show you in detail what apps you've been using and how much screen time you've got actually this part has been completely redesigned so this is how it used to look like before and now it looks like this so you just tap on the days to see your total screen on time and the apps that you've been using so let's go back let's go back again so storage i'm not going to go into too much details just taking a look quickly so out of six gigabytes of ram 3.3 gigabytes is in use 
so half the memory is still free and if we tap over here go to advanced you have auto optimization auto restart and automatically optimize setting button so all the old functionality is still there it's just a slightly different ui and i'm just gonna tap optimize now because it's asking me to delete some unnecessary files so see that we have freed up almost 11 gigabytes of storage by using this device care menu the next new feature that has been added to the Galaxy Note 9 with the Android 10 update is Digital Wellbeing. So drop down the notifications panel, let's go to settings, scroll down to the part which says Digital Wellbeing and Parental Controls. So Digital Wellbeing kind of lets you keep a track on your daily smartphone usage habits. It will show you how many notifications you've got and how many times you have unlocked the phone and what apps you've been using. So if I tap over here, it will show me more details. So let us check the usage for 5th of January. So tap over here. So it will show me which apps I've been using. I've been using Instagram, Chrome, Gallery, and it will show you for how many minutes you're using the app. So 54 minutes of screen time on Instagram, Chrome 27 minutes, and Gallery 18 minutes. Tap on view more to see more applications. So this is my usage for 5th of January. Scroll down. And over here, it will show you which apps have been receiving notifications and how many notifications. So Instagram, obviously, most notifications, then Outlook and Gmail. And scroll down again. And over here, it will show me how many times I have unlocked the phone. So this will let you keep a track on your daily usage habits. Now, if you feel that you are using a particular app more than you should, you might want to set an app timer to restrict your daily usage of that particular app. And I think that is quite relevant with social media apps like Facebook and Instagram and even Snapchat and YouTube. So tap over here and from over here, you can set a time limit for the apps installed on your phone. So for example, let us set a time limit for YouTube. Let's set this to 15 minutes, but you can set a time limit from over here so custom time limit is possible so i've set a 15 minute time limit for youtube and now let us start watching a youtube video and after 15 minutes you will see that the app will get disabled automatically okay so you guys can see the app timer has ran out and the youtube app will close automatically but if you want you can extend the time but i'm just going to tap ok and now the YouTube app is grayed out. So you can see the icon is in black and white. If I try and open this, the phone will give me a message, YouTube timer ran out. So the thing is you cannot use the app today. You will be able to use it tomorrow. So yeah, this app timer feature is quite awesome. You can use this to moderate your daily app usage, especially social media apps. Moving on, under the same menu, we have a new feature called Focus Mode. Now, Focus Mode kind of lets you disable applications and block notifications from the disabled apps. So by default, you will have two modes, Work Mode and Me Time. And I've created a third one, Study Time. So if I tap over here, you guys will see a list of applications that will be available when this particular focus mode is turned on. So these apps will be available when this particular focus mode is turned on. And these apps will be able to send notifications. All of the other apps will not be able to send notifications and they will be disabled when this focus mode is turned on. So the thing is, while you're studying or doing some important work, you don't want any notifications or you don't want any disturbances from social media apps. So that's why I haven't added Instagram, Snapchat, and obviously Facebook. So let's press on done. And now when I start this particular focus mode, you guys can see all my social media apps like YouTube, Instagram, WhatsApp, these are disabled because I don't want any disturbances while I'm studying. Now, if I try and open these disabled apps, the phone will actually tell me, stay focused, YouTube is blocked during focus mode. You can use YouTube and receive notification after focus mode ends. So until the focus mode is turned on, you will not be able to access these apps and these apps will not send you any notifications. So this is another way to stay focused and avoid any distractions from these social media apps. So that is how focus mode works. So a great way to avoid any distractions while you're doing a particular task. So you can see as soon as I disable the focus mode, we have a notification from AviExpress, which was blocked earlier.
So now moving on we have another new feature called wind down. Wind down before bed by changing the screen to grayscale or blocking notifications. So this will block notifications and change the screen to grayscale before you go to bed. I don't use this and lastly you have parental controls. I'm gonna skip over this because this requires you to set this thing up. Android 10 also has better privacy management tools. So now you have a dedicated permissions manager for the applications that are installed on your phone. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So we will drop down the notifications panel, we will go to settings, then scroll down here and you will see a new menu which says privacy. Tap over here and then tap on permissions manager. So the permissions manager will show you a list of applications that have access to your phone's camera, contacts, location, microphone, and so on and so forth. So for example, if I tap on camera, this will show me the list of applications which have access to the phone's camera. And if I scroll down, this shows me the list of applications which do not have access to the phone's camera. And if I tap on a particular app, you can just deny the camera access right from over here but the thing is don't deny a camera access for each and every applications because many apps do require access to the phone's camera so you guys may think this my d-link home has unnecessary access to the phone's camera but the thing is my d-link home needs access to the camera to read qr codes so this is an app for this smart switch the smart switch has a qr code printed on it and this app needs to read that QR code in order to recognize which switch it is. So this app does need access to the camera. So just don't go ahead and disable access to the camera for each and every app. Some of these apps will stop working if you disable the camera access. But yeah, it's nice to know that you have a centralized permissions manager for each and every application on your phone. For these apps, you can disable the camera access no problem. And if we go back, and now let's tap on location. So these are the apps that have access to the phone's location. Now here's something new, allowed only while in use. These apps will not be able to use the phone's location service when they are not actively running. So that is kind of awesome. I do like this feature. So I can just tap over here, Xiaomi Home, and I can set this to allow only while using the app. And by selecting the second option, the app will not be able to track the location when it is not actively running. So that kind of translates into slightly better battery backup. And once again, just don't go ahead and disable permissions for each and every application. For example, Galaxy Variable does need access to the phone's location to give you weather access, to give you weather information on your Galaxy Watch. And if you try and disable location access for this app, which is the gallery app, the phone tells you if you deny this permission, basic features of your device may, long, may no longer function as intended. So yeah, just leave it as it is. If you do have a third party application, then you might want to disable location access for that app. So yes, this is how you can control which applications have access to your phone's calendar, camera, contacts and location. Awesome, right? On Android 10, there is a secret feature that will let you change the shape of the icons without downloading anything extra. So you can see the shape of third party icons are slightly different. Unfortunately, you cannot change the shape of the Samsung apps icons, but for third party apps, this does work. So now let me show you how you can change the shape of the icons. Drop down the notifications panel, go to settings, then scroll all the way down to developer options. I have already shown you how to enable developer options earlier in this video. Tap on developer options and then scroll all the way down until you see icon shape. So the icon shape that I just showed you is the teardrop shape. This one. This is the teardrop shape. Let's try square. Now when you change the icon shape, you must toggle night mode or dark mode off then on. And that will change the shape of the icons. So this is the square shape. I really don't like it. it. Looks just blocky and unrefined. Anyways, this is the square. Let's try Squircle. Squircle is very similar to the default shape. So this is the Squircle style. Very similar to the default. And then rounded rectangle. Once again, toggle dark mode on and off. And this is the rounded rectangle. 
and I kind of like this rounded rectangle, looks kind of nice. Unfortunately, it does not change the shape of the Samsung apps icons, so that's kind of a bummer. But yeah, I think this feature is still in beta and, and Google might change this in the future updates. But yeah, I would like to see this feature working 100%. But I'm going to leave this at teardrop because I kind of like the teardrop shape. Also, accent color does not work. So in my previous video, someone was asking why didn't you show this, but that's because it does not work. So that's how you can change the shape of the icons. On One UI 2, whenever you set a color to a folder, the phone kind of gives you a live preview of the new color that you have just set. So I've got a similar folder created on both of these phones. This is running the old version, this is the new one. So to set a new color, just tap on this button here and that opens up these different colors. Now you can see the phone is kind of giving me a preview of the folder, this one does not. So once you do set a color, you kind of get a live preview on live preview of how the folder will look like. This one does not give you a preview. So once so after setting a color, you actually have to go back to see the color of the folder. Kind of annoying. So yeah, this is definitely better. Also, this advanced color picker is slightly different. I feel this is better than the old one. It's easier to set a custom color over here. So yes, that's also something that is different on Android 10. I feel this one is much more refined than the previous one. I've also noticed one more thing. There is this obnoxious space at the bottom of the keyboard, this one. I want to disable this because I don't like this space over here. So drop down the notifications panel, go to settings and then go to display. Scroll down to the part which says navigation bar scroll down and then disable this feature which says show button to hide the keyboard now once you disable this you will no longer get that obnoxious space at the bottom of the keyboard another new feature i have noticed on android 10 is wi-fi calling so if you drop down the notifications panel you will see wi-fi calling over here unfortunately this one does not work on my carrier because the carrier that i am using airtel does not support it on third-party wi-fi but if you do have a supported carrier, you do have this Wi-Fi calling option. Now, coming to the feature that I think is the most anticipated for the Galaxy Note 9 is Samsung DeX or desktop experience over USB. Now with Android 10 and One UI 2, you no longer need any special docks or cables to use Samsung DeX. Just plug your phone in into your computer through USB and you're pretty much good to go. And this utilizes your computer's keyboard, mouse and monitor to get the full Samsung DeX experience and you can do pretty much anything you want like play games, text your friends, edit documents, open apps that are installed on your phone and even take photos. How cool is that? And all this while the phone is sitting and charging on your desk with its screen turned off. Pretty amazing stuff, right? By the way, this also works on Mac if you are wondering. Anyways, let me show you this feature in more detail. Let's get started. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what you need to do on your computer to get Samsung DeX working. First thing you'll need to do is to go to this website and download the Samsung DeX application for your PC or a Mac, whichever one you have. So click over here if you are running Windows 7 or click over here if you are running Mac. I'm running Windows 10 so I will click over here. By the way, I'll put this link in the video description. So once this has been downloaded, run this application and install Samsung DeX. After it is installed, you should see this screen. And that is all that we need to do on the computer. So when you see this screen, all you need to do is plug your phone in into the computer through the USB cable. So I've got the USB cable here and I'm gonna plug the phone in and that is it. The phone will give you a little prompt. So just tap on start now and you should see Samsung DeX load up on the computer and that is it. Oh, by the way, once Samsung DeX is running on your computer, you can now put your phone to sleep. So you can just turn the screen off and the phone is sitting and charging on the table. 
and Samsung DeX is running. So now let me give you a quick tour of Samsung DeX. Let's move on to the screen recording. Alright, so this is how Samsung DeX looks like on a Windows PC. It's actually very similar to Windows, so you got your icons at the desktop here. On a Windows PC, you also have icons on the desktop, so you can see it's quite similar. And double clicking the icon on the desktop will launch the app. See, very similar to Windows. If you right click, you get three options. You can change your wallpaper from over here. I'm just gonna pick a different wallpaper. All right, this looks good. So we will set this for home screen and lock screen. Set wallpaper. And we have now changed the wallpaper of Samsung DeX. And I'm just gonna go full screen by clicking over here. So that makes Samsung DeX work in full screen. By the way, in Samsung DeX, you have access to all your applications that are installed on your phone. So if you click over here, this will give you a, the list of apps which are installed on your phone. So all the applications are available. I thought some of the applications won't be available, but yes, every app is available, including Instagram. So I can just open up my Instagram from over here. I can reply to messages in my direct message inbox and just like on a windows pc you have minimize maximize and close and if i click on minimize the app will get minimized over here and if you hover your mouse over the icon it will give you a preview of the app and you can launch multiple applications so you can see i've launched gallery you can resize this if you want and let's go ahead and launch youtube so you see where i'm going with this this is quite like a desktop experience and by the way, all these sounds actually play back on your computer rather than your phone. So if you happen to watch a YouTube video, there's something strange with the display. You might have actually plays back on the computer rather than your phone. So that is also something that is quite nice. And there's also copy paste functionality available from your computer. So if you happen to copy anything, so I will just copy this and I want to paste this inside Samsung Dex. I will just open Google Docs and create a new document i can just control v and that actually pastes the text from my windows pc onto samsung dex so copy paste functionality is also available and you can also do it um, you can also copy from samsung dex so control a control c on the keyboard and let's open up notepad and paste it over here so copy paste functionality to and from Samsung DeX is also available. Also, you can drag and drop files from your computer onto Samsung DeX and it will copy it on the phone. So you can see it's just copying this photo. So it is copied and I, can, and I will be able to view that in the gallery. So it goes into the downloads folder, it is right over here. So now let me give you a quick tour of Samsung DeX. This is the recent button. This shows you all your recent apps. This is the home button and this is the back button. And over here, this will show you all your notifications on your phone. This shows you your network status. This is your battery. Click on it and it will open this window. Let's just close it. If you click over here, it opens up the quick settings. You can turn on and off stuff from over here. This pops open the keyboard on the phone. So if you click over here, it actually pops open the keyboard on the phone rather than Samsung DeX. And this is your sound. And clicking over here will take a screenshot. And if you click over here, that opens up the calendar. So yes, this is Samsung DeX running on the Galaxy Note 9. Really nice to see Samsung is adding all these features on their previous generation smartphones. By the way, I have tested out gaming including PUBG. PUBG does not work so I know a lot of you guys will ask does PUBG work? No it does not. PUBG is not able to recognize the keyboard input so that does not work. The only game that works properly with Samsung DeX is Asphalt 9. And I think I showed you that in the intro of this video. So this is how Samsung DeX works over USB and I'm quite impressed on how it's working with the Galaxy Note 9. That is a previous generation smartphone. And I'm really happy to see these new futuristic features trickling down from the newer flagships. Really happy that Samsung has added Samsung DeX onto the Galaxy Note 9. Samsung has also added support for Link to Windows with this update. Now Link to Windows will display your recent photos, your messages, 
your notification and your phone screen onto a Windows PC wirelessly. But the thing is, this feature is sort of still in the works for the Galaxy Note 9. So if I click on phone screen, it actually says that the phone is not yet supported. So I think it will be supported in the future. So you can see the message. Sorry, this feature does not work with your phone. We are working on making more phones compatible and hope to support your device in the future. So I'm guessing Microsoft will add support for the Galaxy Note 9 in the future since this is now official. But for now, you can actually see your photos. You can copy them from your phone onto your PC. So I can just drag and drop this onto my desktop and it will copy the full resolution photo. So you can actually copy photos that, are, that you have taken from the phone's camera onto your computer and you can also read your text messages actually you can also write a message so you can just tap a new message and you will be able to create a new message uh, through this link to windows app and you can also see your recent notifications and then lastly phone screen this feature does not work so at the time of recording this video this phone screen mirroring function only works on the galaxy note 10 and the s10 plus so the Note 9 is not yet supported, but I think Microsoft will add support for this phone later this year. And if they do, I will make a video on it. Android 10 also brings Live Transcribe to the Galaxy Note 9. So what does Live Transcribe do? Well, Live Transcribe uses your phone's microphone and it listens to your voice and it translates your spoken words into plain text in real time. Live Transcribe was actually available as a separate download on previous versions of Android, but on Android 10, it is more integrated into the Android system. So drop down the notifications panel, we will go to settings and scroll down to the part which says accessibility, then tap on hearing enhancements. And over here, you have a feature called Live Transcribe. Tap over here and turn this on and click on allow. So to access Live Transcribe, when you have the gestures turned on, just swipe up using two fingers. So I will, I will tap on got it. Let's go back to the home screen and swipe up with two fingers. And that launches Live Transcribe. And you can see what is going on. It is actually listening to my voice or listening to my spoken words and it's translating them into plain text in real time. Yeah, that's a little bit of a mistake over there, but doesn't matter. I have a weird accent, so yeah. And by the way, you can just, you can actually select these, select these words and then copy them and paste them wherever you want. So this is just plain text. You can copy and send it over to your friend as a text message or paste them wherever you want on the phone. So this is an awesome feature. Love it. Thumbs up. Always on display also sees a slight update. So there is a new clock style for the always on display. So we will go to settings and then we will go to lock screen, then clock style and then tap on always on display. And if you scroll over here, this is a new clock style. This was not available before. And also the world clock sees a slight update. So previously we had the world clock like this. And now if I show you, scroll here, this is the new world clock. So now you add cities and they stack up vertically like this. So let's add a city. So this is how the new one looks like. And this is how the old one looks like. To be honest, I did prefer the old one, but this is also nice. And if you wanna, rearrange these just long press and you can just rearrange them and all of your other clock styles are over here so tap this and this will show you all the other clock styles so you still have that edge thingy so guys we are almost at the end of this video and for my final 25th feature i'm going to show you how to turn on one-handed mode because the way you turn on one-handed mode is slightly different on android 10 so we will drop down the notifications panel and we will go to settings then advanced features and scroll down and then tap on one handed mode. You have two options here. Make sure you turn on one handed mode first. Then to activate one handed mode, you have two options. If you have gestures turned on like I have right now, so there are, so there is no navigation bar at the bottom of the screen button is for when you have the navigation bar. Okay, so on the previous version, if you wanted to turn on one handed gestures, you had to like swipe up diagonally from either side of the screen. So swipe up like this 
to turn on one-handed mode. Now on Android 10, if you want to turn on one-handed mode, you just swipe down in the middle of the screen and that turns on one-handed mode and then you can resize the window to your liking. So I think this is much more convenient compared to the old one. You just have to swipe down like this and that turns on one-handed mode and it works almost everywhere. So for example, if I am browsing Instagram to turn on one-handed mode, just do this and that turns on one-handed mode. All right guys, that brings us to the end of this video and I'm quite happy with the Android 10 update on the Galaxy Note 9. It feels more or less like the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, at least in the software department. And the phone is nice and snappy, battery life is good, I'm quite happy with it. And the Galaxy S9 Plus is the next phone to receive this update. I'm not sure if I'm gonna make the same video of that phone because I have already done three videos on Android 10. But yeah, let's see what happens. So guys, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos and I will see you guys next time.